We need to talk about the silent killer that is destroying your skin. Well, hey guys, now before you click out of this video thinking I'm just gonna be prattling on per usual about how harmful unprotected sun exposure is, how being sleep deprived and binge drinking is what leads to premature skin aging, Hold your horses because in today's video, we are going to be discussing something else that you need to be aware of that is impacting your health, including how your skin ages. Now, on this channel, we do not vilify aging. Aging is a gift, it is a blessing. The alternative to aging is dying. However, the skin is our first line of defense against the outside world, and it provides ample clues to problems lurking beneath the surface internal to us. So what exactly is this so-called silent killer you speak of? Pollution. Both outdoor and indoor air pollution are actually considered to be one of the biggest environmental health risks for humans. Now, similar to ultraviolet radiation, pollution is one of those things we don't see, we don't feel, we know it's there lurking in the background, we know it's bad, but it's easy to go throughout your day and not really think about it too much. What exactly is air pollution? Air pollution is defined as the contamination of outdoor ambient and indoor household environments by a chemical, physical, or biological agent that modifies the natural characteristics of the atmosphere. Pollution is basically a mixture of particles and gases that can reach harmful concentrations both outside and indoors. Soot, smoke, mold, pollen, methane, and carbon monoxide. Air pollution affects many organ systems, including your heart and your lungs. Fine particles in polluted air penetrate deeply into your lungs and contribute to lung cancer, COPD, asthma, and respiratory infections. There is evidence actually that air pollution affects our central nervous system, our reproductive system, and of course, germane to this channel and what we we're talking about today, our skin. Where does pollution come from? Most commonly, pollutants are generated through the burning of fossil fuels by cars and industries, giving rise to pollution components such as particulate matter, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Now, additional pollutants are derived from sources like cigarette smoke, volatile organic compounds, otherwise known as VOCs, and tropospheric ozone. These things are generated by like power plants, industries, vehicles, domestic agricultural sources. Why exactly is pollution bad for our health? Air pollution causes oxidative stress. That's another one of those ambiguous things we know is lurking in the background, but we can't see or feel. Oxidative stress is basically what happens when there is an imbalance of reactive oxygen species, um, which can cause free radical damage. Now, reactive oxygen species production is actually normal, and in many cases is actually good for our body. And our body has these systems in place to keep reactive oxygen species in check, limiting oxidative stress. Your skin being a barrier, a protective shield to the outside world has a sort of damage control system in place in the form of innate antioxidant defense. Air pollution is gonna enter the skin and generate what's called quinones, which are chemicals that produce reactive oxygen species. The increase in the amount of reactive oxygen species and free radicals within our skin and skin cell mitochondria overcomes the skin's innate antioxidant defenses. The reactive oxygen species and free radicals, they interact with the lipid-rich cell membranes initiating a reaction called lipid peroxidation. This unleashes a cascade of chaos leading to tissue injury, inflammation, and damage to the machinery that maintains and controls things like our skin genes and how the genes in our skin are expressed. Now, I know I said I wasn't gonna prattle on about how harmful unprotected sun exposure is. However, it must be noted that the deleterious effects of pollution on our skin are amplified, augmented by ultraviolet rays from sunlight. They exhibit a deadly synergy. Repeated and frequent exposures to high levels of pollution can have harmful effects on the skin. And in the presence of ultraviolet radiation, those two things together are really damaging. The harmful consequences of pollution on the skin are illustrated by associations with or causation of premature aging, sun damage, sunspots, 
melasma, and increased incidence of inflammatory skin conditions like atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, acne, and also skin cancer. So how does pollution enter our skin to cause said damage? Skin interfaces with the atmosphere, and it appears as though pollutants can gain entry into the skin by accumulating on the skin surface and by absorbing through the hair follicles, aka your pores, as well as your sweat ducts. Pollution can also be inhaled or ingested and can circulate throughout your plasma and then diffuse into the deeper layers of your skin, otherwise known as the dermis. Yes, that is right. Pollutants can be ingested by eating grilled meats, meats that are grilled at high temperatures that form a char. Um, that burning of creatine and fat in the meat produces carcinogenic chemicals known as heterocyclic amines or HCAs, as well as those polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Now the dermis is where like collagen and elastin, all that supportive framework is, right? And that's really where our mind goes to when we're thinking about wrinkles because with age as well as with external aggressor exposures, the supportive framework down there, it starts to break down and that's what leads to wrinkles, fine lines, the prominent signs of skin aging. It appears as though pollution may hasten this process. Epidemiologic studies have discovered a direct link between airborne particulate matter exposure and the occurrence of prominent signs of skin aging, especially pigment spots and wrinkles. Studies have demonstrated that an increased exposure to soot and particles from traffic were associated with actually 20% more pigment spots on the forehead and the cheeks. Pollution with and without the synergy from ultraviolet radiation has been proven causative for premature age spots and wrinkles. Lentigenes, this is a fancy medical term for small brown flat spots, typically located on the face, the hands, the chest. Now, it's perfectly normal to have these. They are something that happens as you get older with advancing age, but if you have a lot of them, numerous lentigenes in sun exposed skin, it's a sign of premature skin aging, of extensive sun damage, and also a clue to potential skin cancer risk. Exposure to particulate matter pollution is significantly associated with lentigenes on the cheeks, the backs of the hands, and the higher the particulate matter exposure, the more numerous the sunspots, the lentigenes. Exposure to secondhand smoke and fossil fuels are also associated with a higher number of spots on the cheeks. One study actually showed that a distance of 100 meters or less from a busy road was associated with 35% more spots on the forehead and 15% more on the cheeks. Now, association does not necessarily prove causation. You know, sometimes people live near traffic maybe it reflects the nature of the work that they are in. Maybe they are more likely to have an occupation where they're outdoors, they get more sun exposure. So whether or not it's that they you know, live close to traffic or that they're just outside a lot more, who knows? But there are a lot of epidemiologic studies that do suggest a close association with more pollution exposure and more age spots. But aside from lentigenes, several skin conditions exhibit associations with pollution. Uh, for example, recent studies suggest pollution as a possible risk factor for the development of melasma. Melasma is a skin condition characterized by symmetric patches of brown hyperpigmentation with angulated borders. Now I have several videos on melasma here on my channel, and of course it is a complicated condition. It involves your genetics, hormones, of course sun exposure. We know that unchecked inflammation in the skin, it causes the pigment producing cells, the melanocytes, to amp up pigment production, plays a major role in melasma. The reactive oxygen species generated from pollution can trigger enzymes that lead to skin pigmentation and worsening of melasma. Pollution is also thought to have a direct negative impact on the severity of chronic inflammatory skin conditions, such as atopic dermatitis and psoriasis. Patients with these conditions, if they live somewhere with more pollution, they tend to have more severe disease. Speaking of inflammatory skin conditions, robust evidence indicates a strong link between pollution and inflammatory acne. Many women report that their acne can be a lot worse during periods of higher air pollution. Studies looking at skin quality changes such as vitamin E and antioxidant in the skin and squalane observed a decline in these measures of skin quality with chronic exposures to ambient pollution. It's also worth pointing out that there is an association with pollution and an increased risk of skin cancer. Now again, associated 
association does not prove causation in all of these cases, but taken together, one cannot ignore the deleterious effects of pollution on our health. The American Lung Association estimates that more than 40% of the U.S. population are actually at risk for disease and premature death from air pollution. What can you do, though, to mitigate the negative impacts of pollution on your health? Well, we know that antioxidants neutralize free radicals produced as a result of toxic air pollutants entering the body. And a diet rich in antioxidants may be the fuel necessary to help protect from damage. The best evidence we have to support this comes from a study examining the Mediterranean diet. This diet involves the consumption of foods high in antioxidants, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, olive oil, fish, and poultry. For over 17 years, researchers prospectively collected data from 550,000 people in the U.S. On average, they were 62 years of age. This cohort was grouped on how closely their eating habits mirrored the Mediterranean diet and on estimates of their long-term exposure to air pollution. Among individuals who least adhered to the Mediterranean diet eating pattern, death increased by 5% for every 10 parts per billion increase in long-term average pollutant exposure. Deaths from cardiovascular disease increased 17% for every 10 micrograms per meter squared increase in long-term average particulate matter exposure among individuals who did not follow the diet compared to 5% who did. Similar patterns for death from heart attacks were also seen. Now, while there are variables that it may explain this aside from diet alone, there is certainly a case to be made to eating a healthy, balanced, high antioxidant diet. What about an anti-pollution skincare routine? Cleansing the skin is the backbone here as airborne pollutants can bind to the skin and they can weaken the skin barrier, rendering it more vulnerable to ultraviolet radiation damage dryness, wrinkling, and hyperpigmentation. Sunscreen, SPF during the day is key for obvious reasons of mitigating the synergistic assault of ultraviolet radiation plus pollution. Moisturizers help with barrier function, limiting the penetration of pollutants. Now, many moisturizers and sunscreens are formulated with evidence-based antioxidants, such as niacinamide, coenzyme Q10, green tea, resveratrol. Now the dream with applying these to the skin is that they help reduce oxidative stress and free radical damage and may help boost up our skin's antioxidant defense systems. However, topical antioxidants are an area with many unknowns. The formulation has to be just right, they have to be stable, they have to be able to get into the skin, they have to be able to be at the right place at the right time Time and the dose. All that to say, you don't really have to go out of your way to find these antioxidants in your skincare, and they likely are already in the skincare products that you are using. They may aid to some extent in providing some additional defense against the onslaught of pollutions. So at the end of the day, the anti-pollution skincare routine is sticking to the basics, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen. Aside from the diet suggestions and a basic skincare routine, good lifestyle habits are going to bode well for your skin's ability to defend against pollution. Poor sleep reduces immune function, limiting defense against and repair of damage from pollution. Excessive alcohol is inflammatory. It depletes the skin's antioxidant defenses, making the insult from pollution all the more sinister. Sedentary lifestyles reduce immune function while staying active, boost your cardiometabolic health and your body's natural defenses against environmental aggressors. So even though I said at the beginning of this video, I wasn't going to prattle on about the typical lifestyle thing here we are. All right, y'all, I really hope you found this video useful in highlighting the role of pollution in human health and skin aging. Again, we don't vilify aging here, but we want to live a healthy life. Now, on the end slate, I'm going to link up a video where I explain all about the limitations of antioxidants in skincare products, so you're gonna wanna watch that one next. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.